What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at and breaking down the Faith Multishot Boazon build. So this is probably going to be one of the most expensive builds you can make in D2 and is honestly probably the most underwhelming in terms of performance. And the gear choice is a little bit controversial. So again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree with my setup in today's video. But like all my previous build videos, timestamps will be in the description below. So if you guys want to bounce back and forth between specific segments of the video, they're there for you guys to use. So please take advantage of them. And also one last quick little reminder for those that do enjoy this YouTube content. I do stream twice a week on Twitch. Got the link for my Twitch channel in the description below. Any follows over there on that platform would be very much appreciated. But guys, I really hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So the first thing that I want to do is to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the pros and cons associated with the Faith Multishot Boazon setup. And the first major pro is that the build does have pretty good AoE. So while the damage isn't amazing, the AoE and the amount of targets that you can attack at a single time is pretty good. So in terms of all of the physical damage characters you can play in Diablo 2, I would say that the Multishot Boazon probably has the best AoE out of all of them. The second major pro is that the build, while again it is a little bit underperforming in terms of damage, it is fun to play and it's a totally different playstyle, just kind of hanging back and using your multi-shot to do its damage or switching to guided arrow for single target damage. You're not really kind of up in close personal proximity with monsters. You really just kind of hang back and play with a completely different playstyle. So it could be fun for those that are a little bit tired of some of the traditional kind of build style plays of Diablo 2. And the third major pro is that there's definitely a lot of variety in terms of the gear choice that you use for this setup. So you could use a Dardal's helmet, a two open socket giant skull, a Mavina's with an increased attack speed jewel for 45 IS, for the amulets, cat's eye, high lords, for the belt, you could use Nos for Atu's Coil or Razor Tail, depending on if you want Max Pierce. You could always use Fortitude or a crazy Ruby Jewel of Fervor Archon Play to the Whale Body Armor. So there's definitely a lot of different variety for setups. So that is very interesting. And it just kind of makes the build a little bit less bland, I guess you could say. But like all builds in Diablo 2, there is definitely some cons associated with the multi-shot boson. And the first is that the damage is very underwhelming. It's really kind of like a player's one or max player's three build. Try farming solo like Players 8 or being in Players 8 groups on Balanite, you're not really going to contribute a lot of damage. The second major con is that it is a super expensive build to get it performing somewhat adequately. There really isn't a budget physical bows on setup. I know you guys are going to say, well, you could use Lysander's Aim and you don't have to have the crazy inventory of charms and you don't have to have fortitude for a body armor, but you are going to do horrible damage and you're just really not going to get anywhere. A multi-shot boson is really only for those that have tons of high runes and wealth and want to just play around with different setups. And the third major con is that the single target boss damage is extremely weak. Just spamming guided arrow against bosses like Bale or Diablo, just solo by yourself without help is very, very slow. Definitely probably the worst aspect of this build is trying to take out Bale. For the attribute distribution, I think it makes more sense with a glass cannon build to take an all-out offensive approach, so that's why I went max dexterity. For those that don't know, more points into dexterity is more damage to range attackers, so I have just enough strength to equip my gear, nothing into energy, and nothing into vitality, and every single spare point is put into dex for more damage, and I have 9k multi-shot, excuse me, 9k guided arrow, and 6k multi-shot, with pretty solid fire res, decent lightning res, poor cold, and poor poison. You don't really need to worry too much about cold and poison, and if I wanted to bring that lightning res up a little bit higher, I could switch out my amulet from cat's eye to high lords, that will give you a tiny bit more lightning res if you want a little bit more safety against lightning attack from enemies. So taking a look at the skill tree, I did not invest a single point in the javelin and spear skills. I don't think it makes sense. We're bows on, so we're entirely focusing on the bow and crossbow skill tree and the passive and magic skills. So first starting off with the skills that I invested 20 hard points into, I put 20 into guided arrow. This is gonna be your single target, your boss killer. It's what you're gonna focus on when there's not a lot of monsters on the screen. Guided arrow is more damage than multi-shot if it's for a single target. And then I put 20 hard points into Critical Strike. This is so that you have a chance of doing double damage for every single arrow. This is very important. I put 20 hard points into Avoid. Avoid gives you the chance to dodge enemy missiles when you're standing still. This is very important because a lot of times you're gonna be standing still shooting multi shots. So I think it makes sense to try and avoid a lot of those attacks because we are a little bit of a glass cannon build. So getting that high percent chance of dodging is super important. And then I put 20 hard points into Pierce for a 90% chance of the arrows piercing through monsters because I am not using 
the item Razor Tail with this setup. You'll see more when I go over the gear. You might freak out, but I think getting that fastest possible increased attack speed breakpoint is more important. So that's why I decided to put 20 points into Pierce for getting that 90% chance to Pierce. And as far as multi-shot goes, I just have 14 hard skill points. This is so that I can have 15 or 16 arrows. Anything past that is a little bit overkill in my opinion. You can only get up to 24 arrows and it costs more mana to get those extra arrows. And you'll notice that you don't really take advantage of having such a widespread. So that's the reason why I only have 14 points in total into multi-shot. And then at that point, I put all of my remaining points into penetrate just to have a little bit higher increased attack rating. So a lot of you are going to say, well, you have ignore target defense on faith. While that is true, it does not work on champions, bosses, and endgame or end act bosses. So just having a little bit extra attack rating when I think all the other mandatory skills are maxed is definitely not going to hurt this build. All right, so for the gear for this setup, I am using faith. Little disclaimer here, this is hero edited, very hard to achieve. I have not yet rolled one in single player, but I just want to be honest with you guys, just hero edited for the purpose of making content. The helmet is Mavs Diadem with an increased attack speed ED jewel. That's just for reaching that 92% increased attack speed breakpoint. It's the fastest you can possibly shoot with multi-shot. The helmet helps me get there. I think that that's more important to prioritize over like knockback with giant skull. Again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree. For the amulet, I have cat's eyes just for fast run walk, increased attack speed and more dexterity for damage. Body armor is fortitude, 300 ED, uh, 25 all res, just really good for increasing our damage. The boots are war travelers. That extra adds 15 to 25 damage. That is a significant damage if you take them on or off. So that's the reason why I'm using war travs. For the two rings, I have a dual each, or here we go. Dual each, fire res, lightning res, ring, paired with raven frost for dexterity and cannot be frozen. For the belt, I have Nosferatu's coil. And then for the gloves, I have laying a hand. So laying a hand is the fire res and ED to demons and 20% increased attack speed. But remember, I mentioned that 92 IS breakpoint. So we have 20. 20, 45, and then the 10 from the belt helps me reach that really hard to achieve breakpoint using a Grand Matron Bow base. So you can use a Matt Bow and you're a little bit more flexible with your gear choice, but if you go Grand Matron Bow, it's a little bit slower. And that's just the gear combo that I had to use to get that 92% breakpoint. Then on the offhand, I have CTA and then I have Lidless, not Spirit, just because it's a lower strength requirement. I don't want to go 156 strength. I have just enough to equip the Grand Matron Bow, which is 108. Anything over that, I did not want to invest. And then for the inventory, I have all of my best max damage, attack rating, plus life, small charms. Same with Grand Charms. And then an Annie Torch, or excuse me, an Annie, Annie Charm and an Amazon Torch. So 1920 Torch and a 2018 Annihilus Charm, just to try and get as much damage as I possibly can. And you can notice like all this plus life, and going max dexterity, I only have 790 life prior to battle order, so we're definitely a little bit of a glass cannon. And then for the mercenary setup, I'm running an Act 2 Nightmare Offensive Mercenary to give me the Might Aura. And then I have Treachery, Chammed Vigaze, and Pride. Pride gives the Concentration Aura paired with the Might Aura, paired with a Fanaticism Aura from Faith. Again, stacking all three of those auras for more damage. Super, super expensive, but it's the really the only way to kind of maximize the damage output for this setup. All right, so I'm gonna wrap everything up by doing a Chaos Sanctuary run. Players one difficulty, try and showcase like top tier Amazon gear, what kind of clear speed you could sort of expect. Again, it is a very, very, very expensive setup. Super fun to play though. But you can already see for like players one difficulty, this is... Not even close to a Hammerden. You will never get a Hammerden, even despite like the crazy gear set that I have. This is about the best that you're gonna get. So we haven't run into one yet, but if we do run into a physical immune, I will show how I use Magic Arrow. It's kind of like the way of dealing with any physical immunities. Because as it stands right now, I don't actually have any other way of dealing with them. Single targets like this, just spam Guided Arrow. Pretty straightforward. You really just alternate between two skills, and then if you run into a physical immune, just use magic arrow. And I have pretty decent faster run walk. Not like amazing, 
I have stacked more with like ice bosons with faster Romox small charms, but it's still decent. So a thousand life, you may feel like a glass cannon, and and you are to an extent, but as long as you stay back, spamming your multi shot, keeping your distance, shouldn't have too much of a problem. And we do have 75 fire res, so really, the majority of the elemental damage you're going to be taking in an area like the Chaos Sanctuary is fire, so you should be covered okay. But definitely, I think, for players 1, a little underwhelming for Clearspeed, considering like how good my gear is if you were to compare it to like a Zealot or a Whirlwind Barbarian or something. But as long as you keep your distance and you're shooting... So there's an example of Physical Immune. So I'll just switch to Magic Arrow. Just kind of spam away. It's really like the only way. Unless you were to use a Reaper's Troll Mercenary, but then you completely end up sacrificing the massive concentration aura. That is actually a viable option, but you'll find that you'll deal with horrible mercenary aggro. So I don't personally recommend the Reaper Stole. But both setups work. We definitely want to keep our distance here with the Sace. And I don't think that the lack of having knockback is really that detrimental to this build. I know a lot of people like to use like two Ruby Jewels of Fervor and a Giant Skull for knockback. That setup, in my opinion, works a lot better with Strafe versus a multi-shot setup. Which, if you guys do want to see a Strafe setup, I could run it. It's a lot similar. Really just change the helmet. So another physical immune. Switch to magic arrow. So definitely a pretty long Chaos Sanctuary run here. Considering the gear that I have. Again, hence coming back to the point that I was trying to make earlier. This is really a build for the ultra rich. And you have to be accepting of the fact that you're not going to have the best clear speed. Another physical immune. So again, just switching to magic arrow. And then we just use Guided Arrow on Diablo. Not even death can save you from me. Hopefully I time this out and have enough arrows. Nope. Thought it would maybe have enough arrows to do a single chaos run. There we go. And there's the Diablo kill. Well, guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Again, please let me know in the comment section below if you guys would set up your bows on differently. I have played this build a little bit, not super extensively, so I do know there's multiple ways to set it up. So if you think that you could improve on the build in any way, of course, let me know in the comment section below. But as always, if you guys could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content on YouTube. I do stream it twice a week on Twitch. So any follows on Twitch or subs on YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a fan-frickin-tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.